What's up, everyone? We're back. Dr. Maxfield. Dr. Shaw. Welcome back to our channel, Dr. Lee, where we talk about all things skincare and dermatology. Today, uh, we're going to be reacting to a viral skincare video related to Milia. So Milia, we get so many questions on this, uh, I mean, on our videos, on our lives, like on our own accounts. And so this is actually going to be our chance to talk to you about it. What really is it? How do you treat it? And does this treatment that went viral work? Absolutely. So reacting to Milia video, here we go. Here we go. All right, so let's roll the clip. so satisfying to get them out. Isn't it satisfying <laughs> to get them out? It is. It is. Okay, so this is a milia extraction. What are milia? We get this question all the time. Little white dots, little white bumps, little white balls that you notice, usually underneath the eye area oftentimes, um, and they basically are just collections of keratin cysts that are trapped underneath the skin. And they're pretty superficial, and so you, you see them, and they look like little pimples, but they just don't go away. They never come to a head. And it's annoying to people. We don't actually know what causes them. Right. It's a uh... It's almost similar to, actually they're very similar to the large epidermal inclusion cysts. So like if you look at the microscope of Amelia, so we get the sense that it's kind of small, kind of close to the top of the skin, it's walled off, and then you compare it to what you all, you all, you all, not me, but you all love, love and know and love. There's the epidermal inclusion cysts. These are just much deeper, but they're all related to this like dead skin cell debris that's encapsulated in almost like a little balloon. So what's the initial trigger? Not sure, but it's probably related to some disorder of keratinization where the skin cells or some sort of occlusion occurs and then you get this walled off area underneath. Right, so this could be just that your skin cells aren't turning over fast enough. This could be uh, the moisturizer that you're using that's too occlusive. We do know that sun damage plays a role in creating milia as well. Um, and so, you know, people get collections of milia along their temples, and this is seen in people with a lot of chronic sun exposure. And so we don't really know, but it's an interplay between these things. Um, there are a few things I would say. Now, treatment, we just saw how they're treated with extraction. Let's talk about treatment prevention because I really think this is probably the most important thing is having a skincare routine that prevents these little collections of, of keratin from getting trapped underneath the skin. So, I mean, of course, if the sun is a part of the problem, then sun protection is a part of prevention. And this one, you'd want something, I guess, like a lightweight sunscreen being consistent with it, prevent that sun damage that's also not comedogenic. And thankfully, there are a lot of good options for sunscreens that are light and great for the face, and we'll link some of those down below. Right, and the next thing that you can do is just prevent your skin from trapping things underneath it. And a way that you can do this is using a retinoid. Retinoids increase your skin cell turnover. They make the skin cells less sticky, and so, so things are less likely to get stuck underneath the skin when you're using a retinoid. And then also exfoliating regularly will also help because it will keep that stratum corneum from locking things underneath it. So uh, something like a glycolic acid or a salicylic acid or a lactic acid, these are gonna be very effective at exfoliating the skin and preventing milia from getting trapped underneath the skin. And the ingredients and the treatments that Dr. Shaw mentioned, they're actually doing double duty. So how do you treat milia? you can actually use some of the same things. So once they're already formed, like you saw in our image, there is that layer of skin over the top of them. And that's the reason that you can't squeeze these out very easily. And so if you exfoliate the skin, you can help bring them a little bit closer to the surface or thin the skin on top of it. That will hopefully let them be expressed by your own body and then your own body can clear it out. But then it also helps them be more easily expressed if you go see someone for a milia extraction. Right, so milia extraction, like you saw in the video, one of my favorite things to do, I almost like when I see someone goes, hey, what's the spot that I have? I go, hold on, it's Amelia, and I'm gonna remove it for you. And uh, it's like one of my favorite things to do because I know that I can solve this problem immediately for you and then you'll walk out the door without Amelia. So it just, you know, it makes me happy to do it. I don't know why. So how do I do it? I actually don't use the blade um, that they use in that video, but I use an 11 blade and I nick the surface of the skin and then I use two Q-tips and I pop them out and I just love it. And I always show them to the person. I always say, hey, look, this is what was underneath your skin. This is like a little ball of keratin. And they go, wow. And then I go, yeah. And then I just like a good day for me. <laughs> and then everyone claps. <laughs> <laughs> and then I feel <laughs> 
I just picture in my mind, like people patting, like giving me an award. Uh, but anyway, once they form, they are sometimes skincare doesn't doesn't necessarily get rid of them, though. What Dr. Maxwell said, a lot of the things I mentioned for prevention can often help treat them or at least make them easier to extract. And so treating them is like it is one of those things that's like uh, very gratifying, I guess, because like he said, you know, you actually can solve the problem very quickly, effectively and consistently. And that's a huge thing. One thing I suppose, though, also is that though, there's like a whole differential for bumps uh, around and around under the eyes. And so there are things called syringomas. They, we don't really get much acne on those eyelids, the direct under the eye, the eyelid skin there, but right below it, you can, of course, rosacea. Right. So I think the main thing that you would be confused between the two would be syringomas and milia. And syringomas, they look a little different. They're a little bit more yellow. They're basically sweat. They come from, instead of like keratinized cells, they come from a sweat duct origin. And so they're totally different. They don't have keratin that's trapped in them. And the way that you get rid of these is actually touching these with an electric needle to get rid of them, actually destroying them. There's nothing trapped underneath the skin, whereas milia, you want to release them. So totally different treatment, looks similar. If you saw a dermatologist, they'd be able to tell you the difference. I think making sure you have the right diagnosis before you go super aggressive with this is important because I have heard stories of um, people who had been places and they were getting um, what were uh, syringomas like aggressively extracted or attempted to extract syringomas aggressively. And it was not to no surprise, like unsuccessful. And they've been doing this for, I think, a year. So just make sure you're treating the right thing. <laughs> but you can have these extracted, uh, the milia extracted by dermatologists, estheticians extract these, um, and I'm sure other people do as well. Yeah. And then I guess the last thing is once you get to more invasive procedures, oh, actually, this is interesting. So you get to more invasive procedures like, let's say, a CO2 laser uh, and or uh, like a deep chemical peel. They can and will remove the milia because of the depth, like a deep chemical peel goes down to the mid reticular dermis. And that will, of course, help these be shed. Now, the kicker is that milia also can be a consequence. They can actually form as a part of scarring. So you can actually see milia after a deep chemical peel or CO2 laser as well. So it's one of those things it can treat it or if it scars or it can actually cause it. In the scarring process, they sometimes trap these keratin balls underneath the skin. And so you see this in conditions like porphyria where you can get like almost milia that develops. So it's just... It's kind of like yeah, it's a little yeah. nuance, a little more nuance than you would think. So thank you all so much for tuning in. Please like, comment, and subscribe and, uh, you know, other stuff. <laughs> yeah, follow us on Instagram and we appreciate you as always. And join our Discord, Skincare Discord, uh, link below. So thank you all so much for tuning in. We love all of you. We'll see you next time.